we pray that you will be with us this morning as we gather here in your church. Bless every heart, Lord. Father, we open our hearts and we lift up our hearts to you. We pray that you will speak to us. We pray that you will touch us, minister to us, Lord, through our present worship, through your word this morning, Lord, in Jesus' name. Thank you so much. We bless you. We bless you. We want to commit our time to you. We thank you for today. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Come, let us all stand. Hallelujah. <clears throat> oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, we sing. We want to sing our praise. you are good. You are so good to us. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Let's give Jesus a clap offering. All right, let's just uh, uh, rejoice in the Lord and uh, have a good time in the presence of God. You know, sing along and just worship together uh, with us in this place. All right, feel free. You can clap your hands. All right, don't worry to make noise in the house of God. Amen. Amen. All right.
thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your faithfulness. Your word says, Lord, be still and know that I am God. And Lord, that is what we want to do, to be still, to trust you, to rely on you, knowing that you are God. You are in control over all things. You are in control over our life. And we can put our trust in you. We praise and exalt your name. We worship you today because you are our God. And we thank you for Jesus, who is the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. We thank you for Jesus here in this place. Lord, you are here. Your presence is here. Your love is here. We thank you. We give all the glory and praise to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say Amen. 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 You may be seated. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Good morning, church. Come on, come on. We can do better. Good morning, church. Yes, we need to be loud in the house of the Lord. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Before we go into the word this morning, let us look into some announcement for this coming week. All right. Uh, this coming Friday, we have our Bible study and also our prayer meeting here in church. Uh, we encourage you to join us here physically. Uh, in the church. If you're out of Epo, you can join us uh, through Zoom so you can get the link from us. All right. And um, as usual, Sunday service, English service at 1115 and Bahasa at 745. Both services are done online and we will also uh, post it on YouTube. Okay. So we encourage you to subscribe. Yeah, to like and to comment and everything to share with your friends and family so they will also be blessed by the word of God. All right. Now, mission offering, our collection is at every end of the month, every last Sunday of the month. And this month, it will be uh, next, no, today. <laughs> today. Next week is first, right? A uh, second. Am I right? Am I wrong? Quiz time. Next week is what? Sunday. Uh, 10 to 5. All right, I'm extra one week ahead. All right, so next week, next Sunday is our collection. So do come with hearts prepared, offering prepared, your mission offering. All right, uh, as I mentioned before, if you're not able to join in the field, you can always join and support the works of the Lord by your giving, by your prayers. All right, okay. Now, uh, every Sunday after service, we have our lunch here in church, all right? So we encourage all of the members, yeah, to bring your uh, favorite dish, the one that you cook best. I mentioned this a lot of times now, right? You can memorize my script, all right? So bring your best cooked dish, the one that you want to share with everyone. And, you know, uh, just to say this to us, we are a uh, blessed church because we are of all ethnicity here did i mention that did i say that correctly ethnicity all right we have uh chinese food we have filipino food we have indian food and everything okay so do come bring and just enjoy yeah of course enjoy the service and the word of god and then after we enjoy the food all right okay now ipo prayer watch uh it is uh, every tuesday now this is an, um, a monthly event here in Ipo. So it is an interchurch event. We encourage all churches to join. And of course, all of us here yeah, to join us in Elim Church that is in town uh, at 8 p.m. Okay, so uh, join us. And this month it will be on the... Yes, okay, last Tuesday, huh? All right. And uh, we also have our Ipo Prayer Watch Altar. That is the uh, prayer on every Friday morning from 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. And yes, it is very hard to wake up for some of us, including me. Yeah, like last week, I put my alarm and I overslept. Okay, <laughs> all right. So uh, join us on, um, on Zoom. This will be on Zoom only. All right, so join us from 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. just to have a time of prayer and worship. All right. 
All right. And um, this morning, we will collect two offerings. Yeah, we, we will collect our first offering for the church and the second offering for our guest speaker this morning. Yeah, he is um, blending in this morning, so you might not see him. All right. Oh, wow, everybody's turning. Okay. <laughs> All right. So um, we will collect. So uh, let us prepare our hearts for the collection of our first offering. Okay. Uh, giving to the church, supporting the works of the Lord, giving back uh, with everything that we receive in our lives, the blessing, yeah, the, the life, the health in, in our life, you know, giving back to him, okay? And those of us who give online, you can always give through our bank account. It is on our screen, it's on our flyers, and it is also on our live description of our service, all right? So let us prepare our hearts to give this morning and I would like to invite Sister Olive to pray for the offering this morning. <laughs> Good morning, thank you. Okay, let us bow our head and then we want to give thanks to the Lord. We thank you Lord that we'll be able to give this for part of us of Lord for where that Lord, you had given us so much more that is uncountable into our lives. Thank you for your hand. Thank you for your blessing. Thank you for your grace and mercy upon our lives. And wherever we go as well, Lord, whatever we do also, we will prosper because of you, God. We thank you, God, that you give us this breath as well, Lord, that we'll be able to give because we are blessed, Lord. Bless this giving and those people who are giving through online and also physically, Lord. Touch their hearts as well, Lord. Continue to to dwell into their hearts and to their life as well, that for where that you are God, that who loves to give as well. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Olive. God bless you, church, as you give. And to those of us who give online, do take your time to give. All right. And um, the second offering... We will collect the second offering after the service, after the word of God. All right. So I would like to hand over the time to Pastor Carlo to introduce our guest speaker this morning. Let us give Pastor Carlo a hand. And it is also his birthday, if you haven't known this. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Uh, my daughter asked me, or my wife also asked me, so how do you feel uh, in turning 50 so I told them I feel old, <laughs> feel old. But uh, God is good, um, give us this life. Uh, we seldom uh, have celebration like this, yeah? but uh, thank you for coming today. Uh, some of you come because we told you that uh, we're celebrating my 50th birthday, so I appreciate your attendance here. Thank you so much. All right, but uh, we have a guest speaker here this morning, uh, Pastor Ling. He is not new in Ipo, right? But uh, he has been a pastor for many years. Uh, been pastoring uh, High Praise Assembly in uh, Pangkalan there. Uh, but now he also helping out the local church in Setiawan, uh, his hometown, his hometown. All right. I, I don't really know him personally or know him that quite long, but I've heard of him a um, long time already. But because of the pastor's fellowship, we, so we get connected, right? So uh, to me, I, I look up to people and also um, thanking God and appreciating people who serve the Lord, all right? And uh, it's not easy to stay in the ministry, right, until you serve the Lord, until you age in the ministry, all right? Uh, there's a lot of things that we can thank God for that, and this is what... I believe Pastor Ling uh, has experience, and I believe there are so much things he can share with us here this morning. All right, I believe he, uh, the Lord has uh, dropped some of his word into his heart to share to us this morning to bless us here. So this morning you are in the right place, all right? And I believe God has a word for you, all right? Of, uh, we will collect offering after his preaching, but uh, we, we give time if the Lord move and you know move Pastor Ling to uh, pray for you and all we just let the Lord do that all right praise God so um, I will not uh, take so much time let us put our hands together and welcome Pastor Ling thank 
you. My privilege to be here with you. And uh, when your pastor called me, he said, hey, this is Father's Day. I didn't even realize today is a Father's Day because Father's Days are not usually prop popular. So <laughs> but anyway, thank you so much for your invitation, Pastor Carlo, and also a happy birthday to you. It's a so wonderful, amazing, amen. Uh, you know, uh, when you reach 50, it's just that uh, you're entering into something that is uh, uh, differently. You handle, you see things differently. You you handle things differently, right? At a certain age. I'm going to be 70. Few more months, I'm 70, right? So uh, so time passes very fast. And then let's just commit this time to the Lord in prayer. And I thank you, O oh Father, for every individual who comes before your throne of grace and mercy this morning. I will lift up every burden, anxiety, cares, O oh God, unto you. Because the things that they are carrying, we cannot solve ourselves, but we have a God who is able to carry all our burdens and you make things good. And I want to thank you, O oh God, for this morning, the empowering anointing of your word, O oh God, will set us free to serve you and love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. A uh, very blessed Father's Day. And, uh, you know, I would like to share with you, my topic is enjoy Father's hood. Because a lot of young people today, they dare not, they don't want to have children because great responsibility, you know. And then uh, some, uh, they just, they, oh, we just got married, but uh, not, don't have children. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, now, you don't know how to enjoy fatherhood. When I got married with my wife, I, I'm also in that category. I told my wife, one is enough. Right. Then, uh, after five years of marriage, you know, she gave birth to a son. And then she say, what about having another girl? Uh, I say, okay. After four years, then we have, uh, she got pregnant again. And I told her, two is more than enough. <laughs> then it came out a boy. Then she said, what about a girl? She, you know, she loved children. And I find it, wow. You know, I'm in the ministry. I have to run so many things. It's really tied me down, you know. And uh, anyway, after three and a half years, she got pregnant again. And this time, I told her, three is too much. <laughs> That's what. And uh, it came out uh, a very beautiful girl. That, and then the Lord began to change my heart, you know. And I began to enjoy fatherhood from that time on. I believe God took me uh, took so long to teach me. I'm a slow learner anyway. You know, four years, after four years, three and a half years, teaching me how to enjoy fatherhood. And then the, the girls came along. I really, at uh, that time, I really enjoy more being a father because, you know, it draws... Uh, it really captured my heart in many ways. And then, the, you know, uh, God maybe, I believe that God said, now after 10 years of training, another 10 years, when the girl was 10 years old, son, he gave us another, another son. While well, it came along, it, it, son of my old age. That time my wife was already 46 years old, right? Uh, and, and we enjoy fatherhood, enjoy fatherhood. Now, uh, my children are not all angels. Huh? Some, some they, 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 they're up and down and all. But uh, I learned how to, you know, uh, encourage them a lot. Especially my second boy, <coughs> he, if you give him 10 words of spelling words, 10, usually 10, uh, he, will fat, he will study five. He said, Mommy can pass. Okay, already what? 
<laughs> what for? Learn ten. Yeah, that was his concern. And uh, when he after came uh, after he came back of uh, got his result in form five, you have A B C D also have. Then he's uh, he's feel that the mummy will surely be very upset, not happy. The mother because my wife, she she was a school teacher but now retired. And then she, he showed me his result. Daddy, what do you think? Then I look at it. Then I ask him this question. Are you happy with it? And he said, quite glad. So I told him, if you are happy, daddy is happy. <laughs> no, no, no issue. And uh, my youngest boy, because we, we, we don't study, we don't study Mandarin, so we speak English in school, uh, in at home. But we want the boy to learn some Mandarin, so we send him for Mandarin tuition class, a Chinese uh, the Chinese class one class, uh, and uh, every time he came back, he struggled. And one day he came back, he was so happy. He said, "Daddy, I got eight marks." For the exam, wow, eight marks, far, far away from being passing mark, you know. Eight marks, he said, praise the Lord, I got eight marks. He said, praise the Lord, I also said, praise God, we celebrate. And that night, I really took him by family to celebrate his eight marks, even though far from, you know, passing marks and all that. Uh, just to encourage them and all that. And I believe that God, the father is like that. We got eight marks. Some people may be below eight marks, but the father still loves you, right? You see the prodigal son in the story. When the father saw the sons coming back far, far away, far short of the expectation of the elder brother and people, but the father ran to him, embraced him, kissed him, welcome. That speaks about you and me. We are so far from perfection, far from the expectation of the elder brother. But God, the father loves us. And in this house, there is a father who loves you. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Now, the scripture said, in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 15, for though you have, may have 10,000 guardians in Christ, you do not have many fathers, right? You do not have many more fathers. And uh, I believe the roles of a father is very, very important, right? And uh, some are fathers, but they do not know how to be father. <laughs> right, right. Um, so, you don't enjoy fatherhood. What makes Abraham different? In the eyes of God, you see, God spoke this thing. Before God wanted to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, the Lord made this remark. And even the scriptures say, God remember Abraham. Man who is called the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And he said this you know, in Genesis 18:17. Then the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham what I'm about to do? In other words, the Lord is saying, I know this man, Abraham. Shall I hide these things from him? I'll share with him. He's called a friend of God. And then he says, after surely Abraham will become a great and powerful nation and all the nations of the earth may receive blessing through him. Wow, you never know the child you raise up. And uh, my boys who got eight marks those days, but he's one of the top students in the universities today. You never know. And uh, the scripture says, Abraham, his descendant, will be a blessing to all the people of the earth. You never know the child today 
may be like this, but at the end of the road, who knows, right? Like um, your pastor, Kalo, now 50 years already, 50 years old. I felt that, uh, you know, he said, Lord, what have I achieved? So many things to carry, so many burdens to carry and all that. I be a father, relax. <laughs> relax, just rejoice together with them. Love them, love their cooking and all that. That is what they need. That's all, right? You see? Um, and of course, you feed them with the word of God. And then uh, you say, you see today how through the seed of Abraham and the word of God, every promises of God came to pass. You see, Israel today has been a blessing to all the nations of the earth in their scientific uh, discoveries and uh, the, the agricultures and all that kind of things. It brought blessing to all the nations of the earth. And then uh, here it says here, why he chose Abraham? Why he wanted to reveal it to Abraham? Not only he becomes a good nation, because verse 19, very important. I have chosen him so that he may command his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord by doing what is right and just. Right? He would teach the children the ways of the Lord and then to his people around him to do what is right and what is just. Then, he said, then, and in other words, so that God, the Lord, will give to Abraham what he has promised. I believe God has promised us many things. I believe the children are inheritance that he has given unto us, right? Uh, when we see our children, we see our future, right? And uh, therefore, what must we do? We teach them. Our part is to teach them on our part. And I can tell you, teaching children is not easy, and difficult, difficult. Me, I, I'm, uh, I'm the pastor. Somebody want to come in? Uh, uh, I'm, I'm the pastor, and my wife is a school teacher. And uh, we raise up our eldest son and the second one not in the very, uh, what I call, way that we should do. We, because I'm a pastor and my wife is a school teacher and we are very strict with our first boy. We really discipline him very hard and all that. That's a big mistake, right? But we, you know, a child is a child. They are not perfect. And uh, because of this, uh, he became rebellious. Our child became, uh, the boy, the eldest one especially became rebellious. And uh, he created a lot of problems, more problems than, than good. We, we would say, oh God, what to do? And as, at one time, he even uh, um, had some uh, issue with the gardeners and I have to go to the schools, you know, to apologize and all that. And uh, a teacher made this remark. He says, Gordon, the, my eldest boy, Gordon, father is a pastor and the mother is a teacher. He, they can't even teach their own children uh, how to teach people. That really hurts my wife. You know, as a pastor, you cannot teach your own children how to teach other people. My wife really cried all the way back from school. And then we, it, it really hurt us and we went to the Lord and said, God, what shall we do? Where have we gone wrong? I follow everything strictly. You say, don't spare the rod. I didn't spare the rod. And what, what happened? You know, and then we begin to buy books and all that. Uh, you know, do some research, <laughs> and study and all that. And uh, we thank God that God began to turn things around and all that. And when God grew up, he started working, he met a girl who is also a Christian. And uh, the uh, Charlene, my daughter-in-law at that time, that time they want to settle down. So uh, they were thought you need to get the blessing from your parents before you can get serious. 
So Charlene went back to Malacca, the parents, and said, uh, no, uh, I want to get serious with Gordon. And he said, who's Gordon? I don't know who's Gordon. And he asked a lot of questions. A lot of questioning the father, especially you know, being a father, the daughter, who, who the girls are getting married and uh, next line. So he asked a lot of questions. And finally, Shailene told the father, Gordon's father, daddy, he's a pastor and the mother is a teacher. Then he said, oh, like that, give him more confidence. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay. So you see, God can turn things around and work things well. Amen? Hallelujah. And that's what uh, God promised to Abraham. So what God had promised you, right? He is faithful to bring all these things to pass, right? Now, the Bible says, children are our inheritance, right? Children are in our inheritance. Just like the book of Psalm 127, verse 3, he said, Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord, and the fruits of the wombs a reward. Amen? It's our reward if we have children down the road, especially when you grow old. But nowadays, children are so busy. They say, Daddy, we can't, we, we don't time the best place, place to go is to put you in old folks' home. <laughs> But it's okay. <laughs> I mean, at least they, they're the children who watch over you. And I believe that God who gave you the inheritance, the children, he said they are arrows in the hand of the warrior. Amen? You, then when you contain at the gate, you'll not be ashamed. There are a lot of challenges and spiritual warfare around. But uh, when we have brought up the children, you sharpen the arrow nicely. I believe that, wow, it's useful in the hand of God. It's so powerful. Amen. Now, uh, we were at the prayer altar. Let me pray. Okay. And uh, this pastor, Jita, asked me to pray, you know, for the generation and all, all that. Suddenly, when I read the scripture verse about uh, Isaiah 54, and it, 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 it talked about God say, I will create a blacksmith. I never understand why blacksmith, you know, you know, and the fangs, the coal, the fire, and all that. Then I began to, and then that scripture was talk about children and all that. And uh, some of your children may be like iron, difficult to bend, very hard, very rebellious and all that. But the blacksmith have the skill, the ability to soften the iron and make the iron to become a useful weapon and also tools for cultivation. Amen? That's the reason why. God is so wise when He put everything in the Word. We may not understand why blacksmith maybe make me let's say, raise out merchants to do business. Chinese not to do business. <laughs> or maybe no, no, some, something else. But why blacksmith? Oh, God have a reason. Because God knows and understands every situation. He said, children are arrows in the hands of the world. You need the arrows to bring down and silence the enemies. At the gate, you will have influence over the community, over the city. Amen. Then you will have influence. Right? Today, I'm very glad. I can be, I'm a proud father of my children and uh, two granddaughter twins. I'm very proud of them. I can, you know, it, it, it excite me when we talk about them because God is so faithful in the promise of his word. My wife gave me this scripture verse. It's a Psalm 128. It's a, this old man must listen and understand. It was given by my wife. It's good for me. It's also good for you. But also good for all those ladies. Uh -huh, right? Not only. Now, we see Psalm 128. It's a continuation from Psalm 127. Unless the Lord build the house, we all labor in vain and all that. And then the, it continued down. 
when the men of the house especially, when we as children of God, even women, position ourselves in the Lord. And it says here in Psalm 1 to 8 verse 1, he said, Blessed is everyone who fear the Lord, who walks in His way. Honor God. That's why when you come, when you honor your pastors or birthday or whatever, give your best. Bring the best. I like to do what things that God have entrusted to us. Uh, when I pick up my avocado, I give the best. I say, I want to give to the pa pastor <laughs> the best. Right. Uh, so all the small one, I can just give it. Okay. Right. So honor is so important. Now here he says, when we fear God, honor God, give God the best and walk in his way, God will bless you. Lord, uh, the blessing number one here, he say in verse two, you shall eat the fruits of your labor of your hands. You shall be blessed and it shall be well with you. Amen. Hallelujah. It shall be well with you. How many of us after, you know, when you don't have a good day, you came back, look at the food on the table, no appetite. Then the, when the wife prepares something that is quite similar last week, you say, Hai Kong Myung, still the same, uh, same thing uh, every day. This thing is uh, you know, complex. Hey, give thanks. If you know how to give thanks, you'll be a happier person. So afterward, when we partake the food together, give thanks. Huh? Don't taste and see. Hmm? Nice. This one, no, 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 not so nice. Not so. Don't may not be nice to you, but may be nice to other people. Amen. So it's always nice. <laughs> All right. So, so you see, he says it will be well with you. That means you'll be healthy. And that you will enjoy the meal, enjoy life, enjoy fatherhood that God has arranged in such a way. Therefore, you see, the word rejoice is very important. When you have fellowship like this, joy to see each other and all that, children will come home. Children will not like to come home when you show all the sour face, not happy with everything and all that, they rather go out and join their friends outside. Right now. You see? So therefore, dear beloved, come to the church, smile, rejoice. But you say, I have a lot of burden. I have a lot of issues and problems. Hey, who are the God that you and I worship? Yeah. We sang the song just now. He is the Lord over the oceans and over everything. He can take care of the birds in the air who don't have bank account and they never go hungry. They never lack any good things. The lilies of the field, they're so beautiful. Who make all these things? If the Lord can take care of these things, you are more precious than the bird, the sparrow. And he watched over you in every detail. In my 70 years now, I've seen the faithfulness and the goodness of God. Amen. And I just want to thank you, oh, for his goodness. In us. And we sang the song, his goodness chase after us. We read this book of Psalm. Surely, Goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. He follows you wherever you go. He's like a sun. He's like a shield. Wherever you go, the sun will be there. He can cover you. He can reach up to you. He's the God of beginning and the end. So therefore, honor God, fear God, and walk in His way. You will enjoy life. You will enjoy not only the food you take, even your health, and then it will also affect the first person, your wife, closest to you, the other half. Now, let's see 
what happened to the wife. He said, your wife will be like a fruitful vine within your house, right? Not a nagging wife. When the wife, when women's nag you all the time, that means, man, you have not done your homework. <laughs> Something. That's why they nag, nag. They're created in such a way, right? You see? So, you see, the wife will be like a fruitful wine in the midst of the house. It's not uh, something like uh, a coconut tree street cannot bang. It's a fruitful wine. Wine is a tree, a plant, where it twists, it turns, yeah? twisting plant. That means when uh, Carlos say, let's turn this way, your wife say, okay, turn. Go this way to her. Submissive lah, right? <laughs> uh, my wife loved to be here with me, but she could not come because she's in KL, right? Uh, it, it takes a long way to work up submissions and all that. Yeah. I have a conflict with my wife because uh, we have an argument over this scripture. I say, in the scripture, Peter. And also Paul made mention of this. He made mention the wife first. Wife, submit to your husband. And I say, if wife could submit to the husband, it's so easy for the husband to love the wife right now. Huh? And then my wife said, no, 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 no. If the husband could love the wife, the wife finds it so easy to submit to the husband. So who is right? So, so we, we have this conflict at home. So, that those days we were younger. And exactly we have a, a camp. So, that pastor was our former senior pastor. And he said, let's go and see our sifu. Uh, ask him what his opinion. And then we explain. And he gave a very wise answer. He looks at us and says, which of you think you are stronger? You are right. You make the first move. Wow, that solved the problem. <laughs> so you see, the wife will be like a fruitful wine in the midst of the house. It's so beautiful. Wine, grapes, it brings joy. Right? It brings joy. So also, and not only you enjoy fatherhood, you enjoy your marriage life. And you see, it says here, the children will be like an olive shoot around your table. Olive is always a symbol of strength, a symbol of anointing. Olive is a tree, even though the tree may be thousand years old, hundred over years old, but it can bring forth very fresh fruits, can still be fruitful. Amen? That speaks about our longevity. That's the reason why God keeps us alive. And I believe that many of you will have long gone if it is not God's appointment and God's have a purpose in your life. 20, 40 years ago, 40 years ago, that time I was 30 years old. I went for a blood test with our family. And my family doctor was very close to us. He said, Lay, you have hepatitis B. The most I give you is that 20 years you can live. Yeah, that time, really, my uncle and all that, they passed away 20 years, they're very young. Then I came back, I was very, very, wow, 20 years, my uh, share with my wife and all that. So, anyway, we commit to the Lord. So one day I was doing my morning, uh, my devotion and all that. Then there's a song that rose up from my heart. It says, it's the blood that cleanses me. You know this song? It's the blood that gave me life. It is his blood. He took my place. Wow, I felt the anointing. I felt the warm uh, anointing, comfort. And I know. I'm free. Now, 20 years have passed. 
additional 20 years, 40 years have passed, I'm still standing here to share with you, saying that God is real. If it is not His time for you to go, you never go. He has a purpose to raise you up because, because of Him, his, your positioning, the children will come in line. Amen? This is the promise of God. Right? And uh, the Lord says uh, in, the, in the verse 4, Behold, thus shall the man be blessed who fear the Lord. I, I like this word in verse 5. The Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. May you see your children, children, peace be unto Israel. God will promise, God will fulfill all these promises. He says, as long as you live, you see the good in the land of the living. That means, as long as you live, you will forbid wickedness. Wickedness will not rise. You will only see goodness rise as long as you live. Simeon, Edna, was very old. They desired to see the Messiah and God kept them alive until the day when Jesus Christ was born and came into the temple and Simeon had the privilege to hold held the child in his hand he said, now my eyes have seen the master Messiah and I can go now. Your time is not out yet. Your time is not out yet. That is the reason why you are here today to hear what the word of God is saying. As long as you live, you will see the prosperity in this land or the goodness in this land. Amen. Hallelujah. And uh, the two times that you also see your children, the Lord said, you see, you see. But the dangerous part is this, when your wife told you, you see, you see, you are finished. <laughs> when God say you see, then you see good things, all right? So don't let your wife say, you see, you see. Oh, okay, see. La. <laughs> Amazing. And unto those young people who do not want to really settle down, you enjoy your freedom. And uh, you want to, what do you call, when you have, you marry, but you don't want to have children because it's great responsibility and all that. So may I read this scripture to you, what from the heart of God? Isaiah 54, verse 1. Sing or rejoice, O barren one, who did not bear. Break forth into singing and cry aloud, you who have not been in labor. For the children of the desolate one will be more than the children of her who is married, says the Lord. He says, sing, O barren woman. Wow. God wants to raise up children, godly seed. The first thing when he created men and women, he said, be fruitful and multiply. My avocado tree, this is the first time bearing fruit, in fact. After nine years, Slow workers, but it still bear fruits. Well, a lot, a lot, abundant. God wants you to be fruitful and multiply. He say, if you don't, if you can bear and yet you don't want to bear, I will raise up barren women to be the vessels. Look at Hannah; she was barren, and he raised up. Samuel and five other children. And Samuel was the prophet who raised up two kings for Israel. Look at Elizabeth. 
before the return, before the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ in the ministry, Elizabeth was old. And uh, when, Gabriel, when Gabriel appeared to Zechariah, uh, and then Zechariah said, I prayed this many, many years ago. Why you didn't give me when I was younger, but now I'm old already. So the Lord said, keep quiet, shut up. And he shut his mouth for nine months. Wow. God performed miracles. Nothing to God is impossible. Out of barrenness, out of nothing, God can raise up godly seed to serve God and time purpose. And I believe that, especially young people, you are God's end times purpose. You are facing a very challenging time, but yet you got special grace and anointing that's upon you all to overcome this kind of situation. Right? So, therefore, what must we do? He said in verse 2, enlarge the place of the tent. And let the curtains of your habitation be stretched up. Do not hold back. Lengthen your cord and straighten your stakes. For you will spread out to the right and to the left. Your children will conquer nation and will resettle desolate city. Will make desolate city to become inhabited. Wow. But you must enlarge. You must give space. Amen. When your children come back with A, B, C, D, good or not? Is it good? They're happy, happy, happy. When they came in with eight marks, they said, Praise the Lord. You praise God. Celebrate. Right? In such a way, the children will come home. The children will long. Why the children love to come home? Because they always remember mommy's good cooking. Home cook is the best, right? Home becomes a place because you allow space. You allow rooms for them to come in and all that. So therefore, enlarge your territory. Stretch out. Expand. The children will come home. That's the promises. And uh, Isaiah you know, you know, uh, in, in this uh, Isaiah chapter 60, verse 4, he said, Lift up your gate all around sea. They are all gathered together. They come to you. Your sons uh, from afar and your daughters will be carried in a heap. Your sons and daughters will come back, will come home, and all that. And I believe that God bless godly home. God bless godly father who walk in the fear of the Lord and parents, you are so good. God bless you. God grace be upon you. I, before I pray for the father, I want to share this, that scripture says, as a father, we don't provoke our children. We won't provoke our children. Uh, I shared with you, my eldest boy was a very difficult boy. And today he's a very successful businessman. He's, he's, he loved the Lord. He and the wife, they took up marriage counseling course and they become marriage counselors. You know, so amazing. God can turn things around. And uh, my daughter, though she's pretty and nice, but she's a very shrewd girl very difficult to handle. She can look into your eyes and she can tell a story to manipulate you. So clever. <laughs> so we don't know what to do. My wife cane her, she won't cry. She won't cry. She's a very stubborn. She has her own ways and own mind and all that. Uh, I remember she was uh, eight years old. Uh, she came back uh, and then she made call her birthday. It was her birthday. She called up two of her friends. Tonight, you get ready at 7 o'clock. My daddy will go there and pick you up for birthday celebration. She didn't tell me, you know. 
And after she made the arrangement, she told Daddy, tonight, my birthday celebration is at that restaurant. Uh, pick up my two, two, two friends. I said, oh, you didn't even tell me. You. So anyway, uh, I obliged. And uh, she, she was, was such a girl that really gave us uh, sometimes a joy, but sometimes a lot of headache and heartache. We don't know what to do with her, really. Until one day I really say, Lord, I, and I point up to her before punishing her in the scripture, you know, you cannot tell lies. All liars, where does it go? Hell, eternal fire. Do you know that? You know, she, she was very cool, stubborn and all that. I, and me and my wife, we start praying and so, so searching. Ask God, what is it? And all that. What to do with this girl? Now, we, if we cannot handle, you will not give it to us. And the Lord gave me one uh, scripture verse. Love is believing all things. Do you remember that? Love is patient, love is kind and all that. But love, believe all things. I say, how can I believe her? She can look into my eyes and tell a lies without blinking. How can I believe her? And you say, love, just accommodate her and believe in her lies. No, 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 no. And the Lord explained, do you believe? An ugly duckling will one day turn into a swan. I say, that I believe. And today, Really, she's a beautiful uh, mother of two, the twins, is lecturing in uh, one university, uh, doing, doing her PhD and all that. And she really loved me a lot. When, she, uh, when uh, the, my son-in-law at that time came down and uh, asked to uh, for, uh, for her hand for her hand and all that, I, I know the boy is okay, good. But I told Timothy, my son-in-law, to be at that time. I say, you answer me these two questions. If you can answer me these two questions, I will say yes. Number one, are you, do you really love her and take care of her the way I do? And uh, before he could answer, I start crying. <laughs> Because to me, in my heart, I love my daughter very much. Who in the world could take care of her like a daddy? You know, oh, that's a daddy's heart. <laughs> and, uh, and of course, she said yes. And I have a very godly son-in-law also. And God, you see, woke up so well, so beautiful. Right? You believe all things are possible. And therefore, dear beloved, don't be discouraged. Don't be afraid to move forward. Don't be afraid to be a father. When your children come back uh, with report card that it's not good, disappointing. No, don't worry. God has a future for them somewhere. But never give up. Never let go. Amen. And with this, I would like to pray for all fathers first. Huh? And then later, if any individuals would like to pray, uh, I can, I'm here to minister to you individually. And uh, may I invite all the fathers to rise on their feet, right? Uh, just stand where you are, all the fathers, all right? All the fathers, all right. Okay, so members in the body, they just... Also, raise your hand over them and pray for them. And this is the promise according to Isaiah 54, verse 13 to 17. I'll pray this prayer, right? This is the promise of God. Lord, I want to thank you for all the fathers standing up here. And this is what you say and your promise. All your children shall be taught by the Lord. And great shall be the peace of your children. In righteousness you shall be established. You shall be far from oppression, for you shall not fear and from terror, or it shall not come near you. 
If anyone stirs up strife, it is not from me. Whoever stirs up strife, you will, with you, shall fall because of you. Look, I create a craftsman who fangs the coal into the fire and forts a weapon. I create a destroyer so he might uh, diversity. No weapons that form against you shall prosper. And you shall tear down every tongue that rises against you in judgment. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and the vindications from the Lord. This is what the Lord decree, and I decree and declare over all fathers standing here. And I thank you for your blessing. Thank you for raising up Father in the midst of us that Lord, we will see the generation and generation to come. They will see the prosperity and the good in the land of the living. And thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. I'd like to pass this time. If, uh, later, if anyone to like prayer, you know, we'll be around here to help. Okay. Okay. Pastor. Thank you, Pastor Ling. Wow, that's a good word for all of us. Amen? Yeah, good advice. Yeah, good word. So, fathers, enjoy fatherhood. All right? Enjoy fatherhood. Whether you are young fathers or older fathers, but enjoy fatherhood. Yeah, I can relate with what Pastor Ling was sharing because when we were younger, right, we are very, very hard, yeah? Uh, very strong disciplinarian Right, but uh, then when you grow older, then you become you mellow down and you begin to understand more. But uh, we enjoy our children, and uh, we uh, let us be a blessing to our children and exercise patience. Yeah, you know, which I make a mistake earlier. Right, uh, not very patient, but praise God, God help me. All right, so thank God for my children. My children, every time they share, they will they will tell you all the story, uh, how strict I am. You know spanking them and all of that but uh well they turn out to be good children praise god um, but let us enjoy fatherhood amen all right because our children they will grow up they become uh the generation that will be used by god to be a blessing and they will become uh they will have good life and good family in the future all right so once again happy father's day to all the fathers, all right? As the musicians to come, we want to sing that song again, the goodness of God, and we will collect the offering, a second offering. You can uh, bless uh, Pastor Ling and his ministry. Uh, this offering will go to him as our guest speaker today, all right? So just feel free um, from your heart you want to give uh, to this offering, all right? So let's uh, pray for the offering. And let, let us sing that chorus, remembering God's goodness in our life. Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you for speaking into our hearts. We bless your name. And uh, right now we want to collect this offering uh, to bless Pastor Ling and his ministry. Thank you for uh, bringing him into this church today to speak to us, uh, your heart, Lord, and to minister to us. We thank you so much. We praise you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right, let us sing this chorus. And feel free to give as the offering bag is passing. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails.
Please be seated. Yeah, we will collect our second offering. Yeah, let us prepare our hearts to give our second offering. Oh, already? Oh my God! I'm so sorry. Sorry, sir. I'm so invested. I'm so invested. I am so sorry. All right. Um, now that we have collected, let us pretend nothing happened. All right, church. Okay. Let us um, celebrate. Uh, as we know, today is also the day of Pastor Carlos' birthday. So. Let us uh, 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 bring out the cake, celebrate uh, fathers, and also Pastor Carlos' 50th birthday. He is half a century now, all right? Uh, I have yet to see any white hairs on his head, okay? That means he is young and um, still going strong. You saw a lot already, yeah? Okay. <laughs> Um, just a testimony, uh, growing up, you know, we, uh, uh, now that we have moved here to Ipoh, you know, every time we go back Saba, meet all uh, our old church members, meet our family, yeah, uh, they, they always say, uh, they always compliment my father that he still looked the same 20 years ago that they met.